everybody, I'm Quinn Elward. Uh, I'm going to kick off our interim design presentation. Um, here's the order of who's presenting, if you can't quite tell. Um, so I'm going to go first, followed by Shang, um, followed by DJ, followed by Nick, followed by Cameron. So just a quick project definition. Basically, we are building a um, device, an EMP that's carried by a drone. Um, it might be referenced as a UAV through this presentation. Um, so we are designing this actual cap capsule down here. Um, obviously, this isn't our design. This is just something similar. Um, but that package is going to hold printed circuit boards um, and antenna. Um, and its whole purpose is to absorb um, vibration and loading from potential falls um, and just securely hold that device. Um, so this this project's for Dr. Caruso of uh, the physics department. There's another project um, you may get to see um, where they're actually uh, designing the cooling system um, for that EMP device. So uh, this is what the customer gave to us. Um, for us, it was Dr. Caruso of the physics department. Um, 5.95 inch tolerance on the outside diameter. Um, and initially we had asked him, hey, how critical is this? Um, and he said, you know, he wants it exactly that um, dimension, plus or minus like 0.05. Um, so just so you know, the tolerances we're dealing with. Um, but 11 inch outside height, 0.08 inch wall thickness, um, so very thin. Um, total weight constraint, um, it's got to be less than 4.5 pounds. That's what's inside um, the cylinder and the cylinder, obviously not the drone. Um, and then we're aiming to have the shock slash vibration absorbing equipment to be um, around 0.5 pounds. Um, and survivability, this is what we're going to try to design for. Um, it's got to hit, it's got to drop from one meter above the ground five times um, without destroying the device. Okay, and then here's some engineering characteristics we're looking for, um, we're designing towards. So the design has got to be airtight. It can't allow um, flow of water or air into the cylinder to um, break that EMP device. Um, it's got to be removable. You've got to be able to pull this thing out um, and work on it, replace damaged components, uh, etc. Obviously it has to be durable. We're going to be dropping it. Um, it can't obstruct that EMP frequency. Um, obviously a huge one. It's got to be electrical um, isolating, so you're not touching this thing and getting a shock. Um, we've got to design towards that maximum weight I gave you earlier. Um, dimensional integrity, obviously holding his tolerances, Dr. Caruso's tolerances. Um, shell material, we're looking at carbon fiber. Um, we're pretty sure that's what he wants, um, and it's, we, it's something we can work with in our budget. Um, and then the shock vibration system weight. Um, that's something else we're looking at. And then the layout tolerances, um, the inside of the cylinder is going to get really tight. So looking at that. And then the overall shape of the shell, um, just making sure um, this thing can be carried by the drone. This is house of quality table that we made based off the previous slide. Here it fills up with all the customer requirements and the engineering characteristics that we select. As we can see, that shock wipe system is most important factor to our design and then followed up by the inner layout of the design. Here is some of the benchmarking we've done for our project. First, we have the DJI drone. Drones are made to survive day to day life that can handle drop or crash without completing destroy everything inside. Therefore, the circuit board has to have some kind of mounting system to keep the circuit board safe from harm. Second benchmarking item is the foam wrap roll. It's a wrap roll that can protect everything inside when you wrap around with it, and it has really lightweight. The third item we did is F16. Radon. Radon have similar objective of protecting the front of an airborne piece of equipment, especially antenna, without negatively interfering with electromagnetic waves. This specific radon was designed for military purpose, 
and have a right band of RF operation. Fourth item we did is the rubber pad. We need the material that can effectively reduce the vibration within the shell of the product. This could be used within the shell to reduce the vibration when being transported. Fifth item, we have viscoelastic polymer. It's a shock absorbing material that could be used outside of the case to neutralize the outside shock from the drop test. This is concept map. It is based off the requirement and the customer needs for this project. It guides you how do we effectively package printed circuit board, antenna, and the charging sub package for shock vibe protection. Here is our prototyping and a testing plan. Our first prototype was made with a 3D printer. We place 3D printer a canister and then next we're gonna do some first FVA simulation drop test to the canister and the PCB with rubber holder and then we're also gonna have the dynamic simulation with atoms that's gonna be on the April 5th and then we're gonna do the full drop test on the March 30th first. Here is 3D model of the show that we 3D printed. Currently it's still not carbon fiber yet, but we're gonna do the testing first to ensure this works before we move on to using a 3D printing carbon fiber to print our design. So this is our first preliminary design to hold the FR4 PCB. So the idea is that we will have rubber going down the sides of the circuit board, um, covering over just the, the thousands of an inch given. This system has a track system going on. So it has a T that would slide into an inverted T. So this would slide down so it's easy to remove and disassemble if needed to work on the circuit board. Um, the, all that's made of rubber, so it should take away some of the vibration and from the shock of a fall. Our second idea is to have a spring system. So each of those, these holes, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but these bumps will have a spring on it. So this would, this spring would connect to the rubber mounts and into the inside of the shell. And this would cause even more dampening so to help protect the circuit boards. Uh, we ran some testings on the shell from a one meter drop on its corner, like uh, specified that that'd be the max weight spot. Um, the most stress was on the tip, of course. And if you can see it, it is right on that corner, right where it lands. It's hard to see in the picture, but I want to make sure we had a full view. Uh, the max stress was 5.4 times 10 to the ninth. Pascals. Um, with the max strength of carbon fiber, we had a factor of safety of 2.7, which is perfectly fine. Um, very minimal deformation of 0.2 millimeters. So the shell itself should be fine. We also ran it on our first prototype. That's all we've had time to run so far. Um, same idea, it was a one meter drop. This was on a flat surface as it's hitting both legs at the same time. Um, this test is probably, it looks a little bit inaccurate just because of how uh, SolidWorks was. We would have to actually test it, test it on a live um, circuits and the live unit. Um, this, proved to be perfectly fine with a max stress of 8.5 times 10 to the fifth. 
with the yield strength of rubber and the circuit board being, or the circuit board being uh, 6.5 times 10 to the seventh, which gives us a factor of safety of 7.6. Um, again, this does not mess with the vibration, but with the minimal deformation, um, we believe that this will work just fine. Hello, this is Nick Allen, and I'm going to continue on talking about the last design concept, the Pew analysis of the design concepts, and the risk reliability and safety plan, and FMEA. So for design concept three, we looked into another rail system concept. The first two pictures from the left of the screen, you can see are the shell and the shell and cap uh, enclosed. The first picture is a top-down view of the shell, and at the top and bottom, there are tracks for each rail to slide into. The last two pictures are the rail system and the rails partially inserted into the shell with some of the circuit boards attached. Each sub package, and more specifically, the circuit boards, can be easily fixed to the rails by captive fastening pins. Next, the pew chart includes the three design concepts and the design geometry we were given. The design geometry given is used as the datum. From this first pew analysis, design three is the top concept with a net score of eight. Design one comes in second with a score of one and design two comes in last. Further analysis will be needed as new criteria may be introduced and concepts are polished and finalized. Next, I'll talk about the risk, reliability, and safety plan. The main risks with this project includes electromagnetic pulses, electrical discharge, hacking, falling hazards, and the propeller blades. The device emits an EMP pulse that can disable nearby electronics. The device is also attached to a flying drone, so if the drone is flying at high altitudes over populated areas, there is a risk to others below. For reliability, regular maintenance and inspection of the carbon fiber shell is recommended. Uh, FMEA guidelines that I will talk about in a couple of slides goes into more details about possible failures. For safety, only authorized operators should operate the drone and device. And when operating the drone and device, highly populated areas should be avoided. Okay, next I'm going to talk about the failure mode and effect analysis or FMEA. The FMEA items we have analyzed includes the shell, circuit board mount, and shock slash vibration system. The most severe failures would be if the shell fully fractured or the shock and vibration system did not function properly. These failures would cause internal components to be vulnerable, if not properly uh, addressed. Hi, this is Cameron Porter. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the budget, scheduling, and some action items coming up for this project. Um, for the overall budget, we have a budget of about one to $2,000. Um, the bulk of this is gonna be taken up by the 3D printing of our carbon fiber shell that we would like to use. Um, there will be some other components such as hardware, rubber, and the tracking system that will take up some of that budget. But again, most of this budget is for prototyping and specifically the carbon fiber shell. Um, there's a number of reasons that we wanna use the carbon fiber shell, but the biggest one is about reliability and durability um, for the hostile environments that it's gonna be used for. So we feel like it's a justifiable expense. Um, in terms of our scheduling, it's relatively similar to what it was back in February. We would like to have our first physical prototype done towards the end of spring break um, and then slash the week right before. Um, try to have a second physical prototype towards mid-April once we've gotten some kinks figured out and then have our third and final prototype done um, 
in that first week of May for our final presentation. Obviously along the way we, we have a uh, reporting and presentations to work on, but the prototypes are the big part of that so that we can figure out actual solutions to this for this project. Um, and then with that, we have some, some big action items coming up. Um, one of the most important things that we have that we need to do is meeting with the heat transfer team um, and coordinating with them to try to make sure that our solutions coalesce and that they're not gonna fight each other uh, as we move forward, especially now that we've kind of worked out a little bit more where we are and where we're trying to go. And we have a better idea of how we can move forward. Um, we wanna get together with the heat transfer team and talk to them and see what they're thinking um, and try to make sure that our solutions work together. Um, and then coming out of that, like I said, in, this, uh, in the scheduling, we wanna have a physical prototype, um, get some 3D printing done, get, get uh, the parts together that we need try to have our uh, assembly together and do some real physical testing with accelerometers and other data collecting uh, devices and try to get uh, some stuff going. And then after that, start working on the report, start, start putting together everything that we've learned and are learning um, so that we can come up with a real solution. Um, here were some of the references that we used for this presentation and if you have any questions, um, I'd love if you direct them to me. My email there at cprb8 at mail.umkc.edu. Uh, thank you very much.